Вітаю колеги, мене звати Ілі Гошлінський, я виконавчий директор Центру економічної стратегії. Ми починаємо наш щомісячний огляд We are starting our monthly review of the economy of Ukraine during the war. It's slightly later than usual because the vacation season after the third full-scale invasion year has already caught up with the Ukrainians and now closer to the Independence Day together with our international partners we are coming back we Ukrainians are coming back so actually we didn't have that many vacations so we are coming back to re resolving the questions which are faced by the economy as usual. Uh, so the topic of our today's event, how much money is missing for Ukraine in terms of the deficit of the budget, assistance from partners and the prospects for 2025. This is something like, like monthly, this our common project for the Center of Economic Strategy and German Economic Team. Why is this topic this time? It's quite evident the main topic for the last more than one month were the initiatives of the Ministry of Finances and the government in terms of uh, covering the budget deficit, the budget gap for 2024, namely the question appeared which nowadays are the needs of the budget on a permanent basis because in the conditions of the full-scale invasion what are the sources internal and external to make sure we can cover such needs and to which extent this is possible with this same success as we did over the last two years when ukraine <coughs> was already getting accustomed to a relative economic stability to the extent this is possible in the conditions of war and with more or less adequate economic support on the side of our partners so namely today after the review of the current situation as at first seven months of 2024 we will also look together together with the participants of the discussion to the picture which we have until the end of 2024 and what is uh, looking at us from 2024 that's like a pre-party so to speak because today is still the 20th of august but we are starting to talk about the things which will take place starting from the first uh, weeks of September because there will be the draft national budget brought to the Verkhovna Rada and today once again that we have the summer finishing we have uh, put together all the main stakeholders the representatives of the Minister of Finances the budget committee of the Verkhovna Rada the International Monetary Fund as the institution that helps Ukraine go through to the maximum extent as clearly as possible take into account the international experience and as a verifier for our international partners in these complicated days of the war as well as the representative of the financial sector private sector is the person that can also independently evaluate that something that we have in the official positions apologize for this lengthy introduction but it's not official this is the moderator's introduction but the official official introduction will be from our german economic team from our partners robert kichner robert is the deputy head 
Robert, unlike people in the Kyiv office, got back from the vacation, and I'm very sure that he will give us some good ideas in his introductory words. Please. Robert, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, yes, uh, Glyph, you very much. Um, for this um, introduction. Good afternoon and a warm welcome also from Berlin uh, to all the participants of our regular online discussion that is today devoted um, to fiscal issues, as Eglip said. Uh, while the attention of Ukraine and its partners is probably currently focused more on the military situation, I think we should not forget about the economic and financial dimension because I guess this is of equal importance for the conduct of the war. And I'm also glad that we have so many listeners today, more than 100 already, despite the ongoing holiday period, as Cliff said, that really shows also how relevant the topic is and how much interest in it, is. it is. It is. It's as always a great pleasure for the German economic team uh, to continue our excellent and long-standing cooperation with the Center for Economic Strategy by co-hosting and supporting this event today here together. We do it every month. We, as GET, German economic team, are an economic policy advisory project funded by the German government. We have been active for many years in Ukraine and in six other countries in the Eastern Partnership region, the Balkans and Central Asia. As was already as was already said, today's topic said, of the today's budget is of the budget very is complex very and challenging. Complex and, challenging. And, and, and I think this is not a surprise because not running, not a surprise because war running a state at war is um, complex is, and, um, challenging. and challenging. It involves massive, often unforeseen expenditures. It involves the need to mobilize private resources domestically. Domestically, and also from a wide range of international partners, both national partners from the official sector, but also from the private sector. Think about the, think about the uh, recent debt restructuring, or the debt restructuring is underway. And all this happens under a very high degree of also political uncertainty, as for instance, the recent discussion here in Germany shows. Um, in discussing these um, vital discussing questions, these I think we have, or our we partners, the SES, have uh, really established a great panel, really a great panel the stakeholders that represent all the key all the groups here, groups the policy here, makers from the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry people's, of Finance deputies, people's deputies, people's deputies, private, deputies private sector um, private economists, economists um, and international partners. And, international partners. and here I'm very and excited, I'm very excited um, to listen to their to points of view their later on on these issues. Having said that, I will now give the work back to Glip, the executive director of the Center for Economic Strategy, who will moderate the discussion. Glip, thank you. The floor is yours. The floor is yours. Thank you, Robert. So now, as usual, a short review of the situation in the economy in July 2024, and I'm passing the floor to my colleagues, and Maxim will start with some general review of the situation. Max, the floor is yours. Thank you, Grip. Welcome all the participants of today's event. Traditionally, we shall start with the overview of the main macroeconomic trends, what has changed over the last month in July. With the preliminary assessment of the Ministry of Economy, based on the statistics that was made public, the first half a year, Ukraine's GDP grew by 4.1% compared to the first half of 2023. This uh, economy recovering is more slow than expected. First of all, due to electricity shortages as the result of the Russian terroristic shelling of energy infrastructure. According to the estimates of the Institute of Economic Research, in July, GDP grew by 4.4% month to month. That uh, uh, good for harvest speeded up uh, and better than last year. In general, if we talk about the whole 2024, in its latest forecasts, NBU has upgraded its forecast for GDP growth to 3.7% in 2024 versus 3% for the previous forecast. In the first place, this was possible due to the better results in the first quarter and again higher crop crops uh, of this year. 
The deficit of electric energy still negatively influences the situation over the last several weeks. Ukraine has not had any serious problems with electric energy like in the previous months, but again now the shortages are again coming back. So the influence of the energy crisis on the recovery of GDP is still very significant. In July, business expectations slightly improved after two months of drop. In July, the index grew to 44.4%, but this is still less than a neutral level of 50 points. Therefore, the expectations still remain negative. The best uh, was the adaptation of the businesses in the energy in the previous two months the expectations were less because were some uncertainty to which extent the energy crisis will be whether businesses will be able to adapt or not still energy crisis remains a challenge but businesses slowly adapt to it the best are the expectations of construction companies because at the same time they fell most at that time, so they are recovering faster than others, thanks again to a more stable energy supplies and expansion of contracts in the first place from state and in, uh, recovering and rebuilding infrastructure. So the situation in the construction area remains the most optimistic as at July of this year, coming back to Gleep. Thank you. Thank you, and I will pass the floor to Volodymyr Landa for the sectoral overview. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, I will launch my presentation. Hopefully you can see my screen. I can start. Uh, yeah, let us start traditionally from the energy. Traditionally, the energy holds the biggest attention among other economy sectors. We can see on the screen that in July there was a huge unprecedented peak of imports. Over the months, 819 gigawatt hours were imported. This is down 4% from uh, June, but still it's much higher than in the previous months. It's at least twice uh, as the previous months. The maximum daily imports were recorded on July 4th at the level of uh, 35 gigawatt hours. But uh, the heat of the second part of uh, August uh, again uh, turned the deficit back. There were no energy cuts, but they for some time, but then they come, came back from the 19th. So the commercial export of electric energy is not taking place from mid-spring. Possible news, there are some auctions for the balancing capacity. That's the new class of the energy auctions done by Ukrainerho, namely on the 15th of August. Ukrainerho held the first long-term special auction for the purchase of frequency maintenance reserves for five years to ensure stable operation of the power station. In general, it was a lot of interest at the market. Some 39 participants registered for these auctions. Uh, the winners uh, were 12 companies in various time slots who offered prices from 589 to 101 grivna for megawatt, and the weighted average price was less than 700. Ukraine continues other options, and if this auction new auction is successful, if all the winners uh, fulfill their obligations, Ukraine will be very happy with the ability with this capacity. Regarding the methodology, 
of uh, oh, regarding the metallurgy we see that uh, there's been some four percent decrease of the production of steel it's seven hundred and nine thousand tons there was a decrease in the production of uh, big iron but uh, in general raw products grew by 11 percent if we take the oral dynamics since the beginning of the year we can see for these types of products the increase of production is between 21 to 34 percent there's been some smaller exports of iron ore uh, it's a little bit but it's been for four months that the, consecutively at the same time the exports are still much better than in 2023 especially if we compare seven months of 2024 with the same period of the previous year exports uh, in natural form increased by more than two times to some 20.8 million tons <clears throat> apart from that ukraine is not increasing not only exports but also the consumption of steel within ukraine it grew by 7.7 percent to 1.74 million tons in the first half a year at the global steel markets we have seen a huge drop in prices they are half even it was less than 400 dollars per ton but in the last several days the most prominent exchanges fixed the price of more than 400 dollar dollars per ton when it comes to the agricultural sphere in july the exports of ukrainian products grew to 4.2 million tons so this was a two percent increase exported was the bigger number of days in july we also want to mention that the part the share of the black sea ports in agriculture exports decreased to 75 percent this is like the lowest over the six months at the same time we don't see any big problems with uh, tr truck transport and actually the road transportation grew to 220 thousand tons per month the highest months in the last year hot weather has worsened the outlook for crop harvest in ukraine it is plus 36 in kiev now that deteriorates the outlook for crop harvests the forecast of corn exports was reconsidered they say it can decline by 21 percent to 23.4 million tons wheat by 10 percent to 19.8 million ton there's been some decreases related to sunflower and barley while the rapeseed harvest will remain more or less at the same level as previous year and the last slide that i want to talk in this block it's about export of it products it uh, remains very important element of the ukrainian export it actually amounts to 37 percent it's the minimum uh, for the whole full-scale full full invasion we see that there is the global slowdown at the digital markets all over the world this is very much felt by the ukrainian companies within the first half a year the first biggest 50 50 the, the largest 50 it companies had to lay off 2400 employees and with this tendency continues in outsourcing companies product companies do have some reserves uh, to grow and they increase their share of the IT market experts of IT services in June decreased to 512 million dollars and that's the second lowest amount since the beginning of the full-scale invasion thank you for your attention passing the floor back to colleagues I would like to ask Maria Emilina Maria please uh, the situation in the monetary and financial sector good afternoon hopefully you can hear me and you can see my screen 
Yes, everything is fine. Thank you. So, as usual, let us start from the key rates. At the end of July, the National Bank decided to keep at the same level the key rate at 13%. Why is that? In order to provide the stability of the FX market as well as to protect Grivna savings from inflation and to bring inflation closer to its 5% target within the forecast horizon. And in general, with the current scenario, the National Bank does not plan to decrease the key rate until early 2025. The yield for one-year Grivna war bonds along with the three-month deposit rates, they continue to slightly decline in response to recent reductions in the key policy rates over the past several months. And we have also noticed that with the yearly deposits, the actual rate went up a little bit. And in terms of inflation, in July it continued to grow, it reached 5.4 year-to-year percent, driven by a faster rise in processed food prices due to higher energy storage and wage costs. Why this food products grew again? It was because of the higher energy, the storage of the products, the wage costs, as well as the Grivna depreciation. But before we talk about the depreciation of Grivna, I want to show you some information related to the international reserves. They are going down slightly for several months in a row, this month slightly less than previous. They are now $37.2 billion, that's 4.8 months of import coverage. And in general, why we are seeing this shortage, because we see the National Bank needs to make FX interventions to cover market deficits, as well as to manage exchange rate fluctuations and to pay out debt payments. So all of these uh, expenditures are only partially offset by international aid, as well as from bond placements. And as I said, the depreciation of Grivna had certain con um, re um, impact on inflation. In July, situational and psychological factors caused net currency demand to exceed the structural deficit, contributing to the noticeable weakening of the Grivna exchange rate, setting the new anti-record value of 41.7 Grivna per one US dollar. When it comes to deposits, in June, because we have still data for June, the Grivna and FX deposits continue to grow. We are seeing this among Grivna deposits. Based on the latest uh, assessment, the banks expect a further decrease in deposit rates, while their volumes will continue to grow. Also, the term length of deposits will also decrease further. If we talk about lending, the corporate and retail lending in Grivna continues to recover modestly, while in foreign currency it has shortened. In general, the banks expect both higher demand for all loans and in green and increased loan volumes over the next year. SME loan demand is growing due to capital investment needs. Uh, Turnover capital, lower interest rates are contributing the interest towards loans and due to debt restructuring. We have also prepared an interesting material, which steps are done by the National Bank in order to bring banking regulation to the EU standards. You can independently uh, get to know this information in the public version of our presentation. And in the end, I wanted to give you some updated macroeconomic forecast of the National Bank. My colleague has already mentioned certain things. There will be some economic growth this year, but in the next years, we are also expecting that the real GDP will be within four or five percent. 
This is connected with the expected economic normalization and better export routes, softening of the fiscal policy and uh, increasing of the external demand. If we talk about inflation, it shall grow by 8.5% because of the business extra costs, increasing excise taxes and because of the lower crop yields. We expect some lower yields this year because of the abnormal heat. In 2025, the inflation will slow down, but in 2026, it should reach the targeted value of 5%, thanks to a better functioning of the economy, and there would be a better situation with energy. And very briefly, I want to mention the outside financing. This year, Ukraine expects to get some 38 billion not next year, slightly more than 30 billion. So receipt of these funds will help the National Bank to maintain the comfortable level of reserves in order to have a certain stability at the FX market and to get uh, the moderate inflation. That's all from my side. Thank you. Passing the floor back to colleagues. Thank you, Maria. Yes, I'd like to mention that the last paragraph, this is the assessment of the NBU. We don't have the NBU members today, but we have their assessment. Now we're moving to the last part of our review, and that's already a gradual transition to the topic of our today's special topic. Yuri, please, the situation with the budget. Colleagues, uh, welcome. I will talk a little bit slower, just to make sure that our interpreter is uh, breathing better. The first traditional slide, it's the tax revenues of the state budget. We have 112 billion in Grivna, that's plus 7% month to month, and one third year to year of 2023. And this growth is due to domestic VAT, excises, and VAT tax. With this, the net domestic VAT revenues grew, irrespective of a very significant uh, level of uh, um, compensation. This is very much connected to the export of agrarian products. Also, there is a good uh, revenue from excises, thanks to the increase of uh, rates compared to previous year. And we see the signs of the bad administration at the fuel and tobacco markets. Nevertheless, the VAT underperformed versus the budget amounts, mostly due to lower imports and larger VAT refund. And in general, the budget plan was exceeded was exceeded by slightly less than one percent due to overperformance of the PAT, CPT, and excises. The next slide is with uh, expenditures. We wanted to make it a little bit different and more informative. The main change. We are not showing any more in expenditures defense that was done at the expense of the material military assessment from our partners. These are the volumes that you can see with these dotted lines, but this uh, Volumes are quite significant. We see that they're not uniform. So the revenues from the state budget, the expenses of the state budget without this in-kind military support reached some almost 2 billion, 2 trillion grivna, adding 8.3% year to year. With this, defense and security expenses in the first quarter grew the biggest by 16%. I would like to mention that in our reconsidered classification, security, meaning it's the Ministry of Internal Affairs, the security service, 
Also, we have added uh, procurement of drones by the state special communications. This is the structure with the available information in the public access uh, reflects slightly better the structure of expenses. With this, the arrival of this assistance from drones in the form of military ammunition decreased by 96, meaning not the, the expenses, the expenses decreased by 96 billion. And also, we are seeing the growth to serve the debt. They grew by 13.6%, and they actually amount to 133 billion grivna. Next, about the structure of the consolidated budget. This is the graph that you see. It shows the revenues to the state and local budget broken down by the types of taxes, we can see the changes in directing military PAT to the state budget. And apart from that, we see the growth of the employment in the state sector. It all brought the growth of 82% for PAT, while the revenues of the local budgets decreased by one-fifth. Apart from that, we are seeing also the growth of a very significant the CIT tax, the, thanks to their incomes caused by the monetary policy. <laughs> but once again, we also see a good growth of some indirect taxes. We can look at this smaller graph in the bottom right corner, the changes of the revenue compared to first half year of 2023. We can see that VAT grew, VAT imports grew, as well as a significant contribution was done by the revenues of the state on companies which are directing their profits to the budget. This growth was partially cancelled with the lower international assistance and uh, less uh, profit of the national bank. Then we are moving to our foreign aid as at the end of July, Ukraine has received more than $20 billion in foreign budget financing, but the peculiarity of this year, once again, we will repeat ourselves that these revenues were not regular in the first place because of uh, some delay. And this was one of the reasons why the government was uh, needed to change some articles. This is one of the reasons why it was the budget uh, gap, and we're looking at uh, the increase of taxes to close this. Ukraine should get some $38 billion, with the need mentioned at the level of $37 billion. For the seven months of the budget assistance, they covered 58% of the additional needs. But this, uh, within eight months, this picture will be different, uh, thanks to the European Union. Financing. Next year, the situation is traditionally at the Ministry of Finances, Ukraine needs a minimum of 32 billion dollars in foreign financing, but some 15 billion are currently confirmed, so more than half of the need are remaining. Uh, and uh, directing income from the frozen Russian assets. Although today we are seeing that there is a proposal to change uh, the assistance from our international partners with these funds. Once again, if we go back to the slides, which I showed before, this would not be really a good solution. 
because we are seeing that uh, in case we clear own revenues of the state budget from grants and from direct military assistance, they are now significant limiting factor for the security and defense expenses because 96 billion this was more 96 billion more uh, than own revenues there is no further potential to do that correspondingly this is one of the decisive factors of the situation at the war fields from the front lines at this this is all i would like to thank you for your attention Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, colleagues, for this review. And today we want to come back to the part of the discussion with our respectful experts. And today there will be four of them, as I already have preliminary announced. And now I will present them to you in the order that I will be giving the floor to them. And uh, slightly with uh, some uh, information what I will be asking each of you. First, we would like to ask Olga Zikova, Deputy Minister of Finance of Ukraine. The Minister of Finances is definitely the institution that uh, revenues would be equal to expenditures. Olga is responsible for international cooperation. So the main questions will be about uh, so we can get financing to cover the needs. Based on the assessment of the Ministry of Finances uh, about this need. And the second, I will ask David Gray. TP. Yeah. Yeah. because Gavin has uh, some limited time, I wanted to hear the overall vision um, by the fund for Mr. From Mr. Gavin, how you're going to balance the budget of this and next year, how you balance the streams of the external assets and to which extent would not this be a problem for the external stability of Ukraine? And a little bit about policy options, some options about the policy, what Ukraine should take use of, because inside the country there has been a big discussion about that. Next, I will turn to the Volodymyr Tsabal, who is the parliamentary from Golos party and the secretary of the budget committee of the Verkhovna Rada with Volodymyr, apart from his overall evaluation the situation, we wanted to discuss in more detail about whether there are any possibilities to somehow shorten the expenditures, whether there is any potential for that, because in the discussion about tax uh, innovations, business and uh, citizens ask a question why we need this uh, maybe we can shorten the costs and because the budget committee is responsible for the policy related to expenditures this will be the main question for the discussion with Volodymyr and finally Olena Bilan who is the chief of the analytical department and the main chief economist of the Dragon Capital and the member of our supervisory board, I'm a related party. I will take use of my special situation. I will ask Lena to give uh, her vision of the situation because she really understands on the private sector in Ukraine and to give the evaluation how the situation can impact the prospects of economic growth within the months that remain in this year 
and next year. Okay, I have made the review. I will pass the floor to Olga. Very happy to see you, Olga. So what is behind negotiations? Apart from what I said, the question which is very actual to everybody who is deeply in the subject, and you know most of it, what is this with this 50 billion, which uh, uh, Mr. Scholz uh, mentioned as 50 billion euro, although they're dollars, we call them 50 billion dollars, not to mix them up with the 50 billion euro facility. So what is the news compared to what we showed in the presentation? Thank you, Glip, very much. Same here. Thank you for the invitation. Very happy to welcome the participants of today's discussion. As always, it should be very much productive and very happy to welcome guests who are listening and watching us. I would like to remind all the participants how we started this year and why exactly we came to a need in more active communication also regarding this 50 billion from the Russian assets. It's because, as was mentioned correctly by the analytic, an, analytical colleagues, we had to introduce in the first quarter a significant some six billion dollars were had to be transferred because of some delay in receiving military and financial aid so that expanded the financial gap and showed us the risk that can still materialize this was the factor which we at the moment take into account like in the preparation of the budget for the next year and with the adaptation of the budget declaration for 25 and 27 why it's important to take into account such risks as the delay or instable arrival of the military financial aid, why it's important to take into account this uncertainty that can potentially harm us, like we have the situation with our energy se sector, because it's direct influence on the budget in the first place. And when we talk about those measures that Ukraine did during the first quarter, we're talking about the limited uh, measures. Once again, it brings us to a point which other resource can be potentially used starting from the start of the next year to make sure we avoid deterioration of the economic situation in order to avoid further expansion of the fiscal gap. Regarding this year, the overall need of engaged financing was properly mentioned at the level of $38 billion. We have already engaged $24.5 billion. This is coming from the biggest partners such as the European Union, the United States, the IMF, Japan, Canada, Great Britain, Nor Norway and Iceland. This is the list of those partners who, as of today, have allowed us to continue covering the available need in engaged financing and helping us to cover the biggest priorities, critical and social expenditures. Until the end of the year, we're still planning to still engage $13.5 billion in order to provide the budget liquidity to maintain the macro financial stability. That's hard commitments. These commitments have to materialize. Correspondingly, Ukraine is fulfilling all the necessary conditions. It's also important to remind to all the participants of today's discussion that the financing that we are getting, it is getting at the exclusively under the conditions of implementing structural reforms that allows us both to support bilateral and multilateral relationship with donors and with partners and continue to be within the program of IMS. We expect to engage 13.5 billion until the end of the year. What will be these funds? It will be additional financing from the US, from the EU within Ukraine facility, some 4 billion euro IMF. We expect that we have two more reviews 
the fields reviewed, the successful fulfillment of the conditions and the successful uh, going through will allow us to engage 1.1 billion US dollars and in the end of the year, the same amount if we are successful with the review. Also, the Japanese guarantees for some $2 billion and guarantees from Great Britain for some $500 million. That's what we call the hard commitments. At the same time, we have to understand that the prerequisite that Ukraine is fulfilling certain conditions and only at the expense of the systematic work to implement the necessary reforms, this financing will be guaranteed. A big question comes what we do next. In case this 38 billion are structurally understandable, but the need in the overall external financial aid for 2025, we don't have enough resources. And the commitments from our donors and international partners to cover this amount. So what kind of amount is we're talking about? IMF has also discussed 22.7 billion US dollars. At the same time, the situation throughout this year with the, with the activity of the war and with some additional needs, military needs, which were covered at the expense of the internal resource, it showed that this gap even now potentially will be expanded from 12 to 15 billion. So we are saying that in any case, even the forecast of IMF, this could be more information after we have the fifth review. It will be adjusted correspondingly to the realities on the ground. We are talking about the need of some 18.2% of GDP. This is approximately 35 billion dollars for 2025. What could be the potential source for this? Definitely, of course, these are the commitments from donors. For 2025, the hard commitments are the European Union through Ukraine facility, some 12.5 billion euro, and that's IMF programs of some 1.8 billion US dollars. The rest the remainder is subject for negotiations, and these negotiations include the question of using this 50 billion from the revenues of frozen Russian assets. Therefore, nowadays, as I said in the beginning, all risks that have been materializing this uh, year and all of the factors that we take into account when we define the needs for next year, including the measures that Ukraine has to implement within the country to, first of all, provide for the support of defense and security. We all taking that into account. And this is the subject for negotiations, to negotiations, further discussion with partners in order to cover social costs. Why this question of 50 billion of Russian assets becomes more and more actual in the first place, because this is the resource that we, as the government of Ukraine, are seeing as very feasible to use for various directions. So we are running negotiations with partners, taking into account that this uh, direction should not be limited. This could be the defense, it could be the possibility to use it for the budget, for the social sphere, and it could also be used uh, to use for rapid uh, recovery of infrastructure. The second most important aspect is the question of decision regarding this 50 billion is the time. The time frame that was announced in the resume uh, of the G7 countries, that's the end of 2024. For us, our timeline is more realistic in terms of the realities of Ukraine. And this is actually September of this year. Why September? Because uh, in September we have the fifth review of the IMF program, throughout which we have to define two 
important aspects. First of all, this is the assumption that relates regarding the length of the war. If we are trying to be realistic, as realistic as possible, we have to understand that the war is unlikely to end in December 2024. This is the assumption in the program. And that means that we need to we need to adjust our budget assumptions in 2025, and we need to put the budget assumptions into the MF program, which is to adjust the need itself for the engaged financing, and it will also adjust the communication with partners in terms of them making this decision, common decision, faster, especially that concerns the G7 country, the possibility of using this 50 billion by Ukraine. And the third important aspect is the conditions of receiving these funds. So we understand that receipt of this 50 billion has to be unconditional because this is actually the payment for the losses and damages caused by Russia and Russian aggression. And we can see this as the intermediary solution because uh, our end objective is the full confiscation of the Russian assets. But when we're talking about this intermediary solution, about this 50 billion, we need to convince our partners uh, that uh, the receipt of such funds should be unconditional. Ukraine continues to implement a lot of structural reforms. That's the program from IMF, Ukraine facility, World Bank loans. Each of these programs contains a lot of factors, indicators, and Ukraine continues to reform. We are continuing to implement and show good results, which is the basis for further communication and implementation of successful negotiations with the partners. At the same time, we understand that any growth of additional conditions can potentially lead to some unrealistic uh, fulfillment of uh, that big number of indicators. Definitely, the decision regarding the 50 billion shall not be the subject or factor to increase the tax, the, uh, the, to increase the debt burden. We are communicating about all of this with the ministers of finances of countries, members of G7, we are also discussing this issue at the highest political level and we see it very much feasible to make sure that this decision is taken in the nearest future because as i said for us it is uh, the timeline of the fifth uh, review from imf throughout which we want to outline clear uh, assumptions about the length of the war and uh, this is the time when it will be necessary to define whether we have a sufficient commitments by partners to make sure that Ukraine continues to be in the program and fulfilling its own obligations. Maybe I should stop here, but uh, I would be very happy to participate in the discussion and to participate in the Q&A. Yes, many thanks, Ms. Olga. Exactly this I wanted to ask you, because it's a very multi-dimensional question. I can also imagine the complexity of such negotiations where we have the time whenever we need something in the conditions of uncertainty, meaning the procurement of ammunition, payment of uh, social funds, uh, expenditures for recovery, and we need the flexibility and we need to quickly make this decision. Therefore, from this exact point, from from decisions on this fifty billion dollars and like all this complexity and uncertainty, yeah, like the fifth review is coming and new budget for two thousand twenty four is for two thousand twenty five is coming. Uh, like what is your opinion uh, like uh, like what should like what changes could we expect uh, compared to like what is in the program now 
what are your expectations and what is your opinion on uh, on policies because it is it could be maybe easiest uh, we have d debates to which extent the tax increases uh, in this already complicated times of war are reasonable. Uh, there is a question in the uh, in Q and A of uh, on uh, like why IMF why the IMF is uh, not supporting. Um, not supporting uh, loser uh, loser monetary policy like it was done in the US and the UK during the Second World War. Uh, so what's uh, like maybe like this policy framework is changing as well. So Gavin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, you very good much. evening, colleagues. Uh, good evening, um, colleagues. Uh, thank, you um, thank you very much for inviting me to this discussion, and which uh, uh, raises many interesting uh, issues. I would say, um, as, as context, the IMF has been supporting the, the Ukrainian authorities for 18 months so far under the EFF, and as, as Olga correctly um, alluded to, we're focusing now on the fifth review um, of, of the program. And, and I think the context is very clear. The war will last longer. The war, the war is unlikely to end this year. Unfortunately, it will extend um, into next year. And the government is appropriately, as signaled in the budget declaration, declaration considering <coughs> considering the consequences that has. Uh, and, and specifically, it, it means that the um, budget expenditure will be higher and the uh, hope for uh, rapid recovery of the economy will be postponed. The, the economy will continue to grow, but but not at a, a, a fast rate. Um, in um, terms of, I would say my contribution to the discussion, I've, uh, I, I would I would focus on two focus key on questions. Two is what questions. just to define very clearly the challenge clearly facing the, challenge the government, and, facing and secondly, government. what are the policy and levers to, policy to address that challenge? To address that challenge. Uh, and understandably, understandably, a lot of discussion in terms of the discussion, challenge, a lot of the discussion the focuses on discussion filling the budget, the budget gap. The budget and, and of course, that's that's a necessary that's, that's condition a necessary to, to move forward. But to move forward. I, I think it's important to it's important uh, to think about this issue uh, more uh, this broadly. More, uh, um, specifically, um, specifically, it's important it's that the um, the overall financing package overall for package for the budget in 2024, 2025 and, and beyond is sustainable. It needs to be consistent with a sustainable debt path. That is a requirement for many of the partners who are, who are supporting Ukraine, including the IMF. And that involves taking a medium-term perspective, which we know is extremely difficult in normal circumstances, and especially in, in wartime. But, but, but the point is that um, decisions will need to be taken, which will, which will have broader ramifications and that ramifications needs to be thought, that thought, thought, through. To be thought, thought through. The third point of consideration I would mention is the uh, the role of the domestic market. Clearly, most of the financing, um, as, as Olga has alluded to so far, has come from external partners. The domestic market should pay some part, but it's important not to overburden it, and, and especially now when um, resources will be needed for the electricity sector. So I think those are so, so. That's the way I frame this. Now, what are the what I'd say what what are the solutions? Say, what, what are the solutions? And it's it's a mix of things. It's, it's a mix of things. Uh, I, I'll, I'll start actually with the external financing. It is inevitable it is that, inevitable that more that external financing will be needed in 2025 than we'd assumed until recently. It follows logically from logically uh, from the circumstances. Uh, from the circumstances. I, I think, and of course, I most of that financing of that comes from uh, comes donor from, support. Uh, donor support. Uh, uh, but, but in addition, but in addition uh, I think as one of the speakers have mentioned already, mentioned uh, already, work is underway on a, on a debt restructuring. There is an exchange debt offer debt uh, exchange underway offer right now. Underway that right also now. can provide, also um, can provide um, uh, additional uh, resources additional which can help fill the gap. And that it's, it's, it's not as large as the donor support, large but that's the significant. Support, but that's significant. Thirdly, uh, Thirdly, at this juncture, the government, government is appropriately thinking appropriately about, um, about domestic policies, uh, domestic policies which, will which will help achieve this outcome. Achieve and the outcome is to close the, the financing gap in a way which is sustainable. And specifically, I'm thinking of the tax package, um, tax package uh, which, which, the, uh, which, uh, which the, the, the government uh, has submitted to, to, to Parliament. To, to Parliament. 
Now, uh, j just stepping back a little bit, I would, I, I, I think of all those three I, elements, I those so three donor, elements, support, so donor support, debt relief, and taxes as a package. The, the, one shouldn't think of this as being independent elements. They're interrelated. And, and that is um, partly because the donors are looking for uh, Ukraine to play its part in, um, in progressively, over time, becoming more self-reliant um, and, and taking actions which reflect the fact that public expenditure needs will remain significant over the medium term. And so consequently, uh, progress at adopting uh, the, the tax package will influence donors' willingness to continue to support Ukraine. Secondly, uh, Secondly, as regards the, uh, as regards um, the um, bondholders, bondholders, all the negotiations all with the bond of bondholders so far bondholders have so been far conditioned been on the expectations that the Ukraine would stick to Ukraine prudent stick fiscal, to policies. fiscal policies. No, uh, so the no, debt restructuring is not done, but I, but I think done, but it's, it's important think to think about this through uh, through through that uh, through wider through lens. That, um, and and um, also for the IMF, we're, we're asking we're, we're ourselves we're the question, not just where will the budget deficit be in 2025, but what does this mean for the medium term? Because we we want Ukraine to remain on our sustainable path. So all three elements elements so, so of uh, are, are, uh, are interrelated are interrelated I, I've noticed, or we've, we've noticed, noticed, that there's been a, a very uh, vibrant very, debate in Ukraine uh, on the tax package, tax, tax, tax package, which we we would see as a very we healthy development. Very I mean, a little bit like more than a hundred people are on this call, and, and I, I, I welcome the fact that there's, the fact that there's, there's interest and healthy debates um, on economic policy measures, and 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 we've seen the comments, the, the relevant comments raised by members of the business community and the civil society, above all on the question of tax compliance, tax avoidance, and tax evasion. And, and I fully understand the question, why should I have to pay more taxes if there's someone next door who's not paying taxes? That's that's a legitimate question. It's not a problem which can be solved overnight. So, um, so from our perspective, um, if, if the objective is to raise tax revenues, it, it will require some increases in tax rates. That's unfortunate, but, but a reality of the situation which was required. So, so there is a logic so is a to the proposal, to the proposal um, uh, um, which has been put forward um, by, by the government. Um, so, so I think I, I'd say those so are my main comments. So this is a it's a critical juncture. Critical juncture. Uh, lots of um, uh, lots of elements need to, elements to come into place. To come um, into place. I, I think um, Olga correctly I described uh, correctly the state of discussions, uh, state with, discussions with the G7, with the G7 um, on, uh, on, on, uh, on the financing. Uh, there are many financing. important there design many features which need to be need need to be resolved. I think above all. Think above all, for, from a, let's say from a stability from a point, of view, stability point uh, of view, the key uh, question key is indeed question that we can neutralize can the impact of, of, impact of these loans on, on debt sustainability. On, on debt sustainability. Um, um, which which would amount to, which would um, amount to uh, the, the position that these are the more like grants are, than, more than, like grants than loans. Than, than um, so that's um, I think that's a very important uh, design uh, feature. What I will observe is that what I will observe uh, both, is the, uh, both um, the, uh, the Ukrainian uh, authorities and their partners and have, their partners since the start of the full scale war, the the being able to move at much faster speed than we do in normal circumstances. And, uh, and I see a strong uh, political will to move forward, but the detail is very important. Detail but that's, that's very much a task for the future. Um, I, I, I think uh, so. I, I, I'm going to so keep I, my comments that sort of level of generality, but just to underscore that um, I, I see, I, I see my counterparts in the finance industry working really hard towards the September 15th deadline, and, and so are we. And we're, we're very much looking forward to the next stage of engagement. Um, I, I will try uh, to answer. I see there were a couple of questions in chat. Um, so. So, so, so firstly, um, so firstly uh, there was a question about um, why, um, why, uh, why, why is not monetary why financing, why is monetary financing not, not envisaged not compared, envisaged with, other compared with other countries in wartime? 
Now, of course, now, there was monetary course, financing was in Ukraine financing in, 2022, in 2022, during a period when there, during was, very period when there was very limited external limited financing. It certainly wasn't, it certainly um, wasn't um, uh, uh, it was uh, more sporadic. It was more sporadic. Yeah. The fact that uh, uh, the fact Ukraine that, uh, has and continues to receive continues uh, to large receive, volumes uh, of external financing, external financing fundamentally, fundamentally uh, transforms, uh, transforms the, uh, the, um, the issues in economic policy. Because you are receiving large volumes of external financing, you don't need to undertake monetary financing. And that's really important because monetary financing um, tends to destabilize the financial system and create inflation. So I think this is uh, this is an approach which we support because we think it's superior to um, uh, to, to, to conduct policies on, um, on, on, on that basis. On that basis. Um, and, um, and um, now, is the fifty billion dollars uh, a firm uh, commitment? A firm I mean, I, commitment. I would say, um, I would say, um, at an particular point in time, point in we time, would need to have firm, need firm to commitments have firm for commitments twelve months ahead. 12 months so, ahead. at the time of the, so uh, the time fifth of the, review, uh, which we review, expect in uh, September, uh, October, we'd we'll be September, asking the question: Do, do we have adequate financing for for the next twelve months ahead? Of course, over the medium term, we would want to have. Um, to have, uh, we uh, want to have uh, uh, want good to have, good prospects uh, that, good that prospects, resources will become uh, resources um, will become available. Um, become available. And, um, and um, I think that may have been. I think that may have been. Uh, so I think those may be all so the those may be questions, um, questions directed um, at me, but, but perhaps just me, let, but let me stop there. Stop by saying, stop by saying um, that, that this um, is a that this is today's a, discussion is very timely because this is a really, important, really important turning really important point. Turning Lots turning of difficult, difficult questions need difficult issues need to be resolved and decisions taken, and and it really involves working in a synchronized manner for the reason I mentioned. But sort of all the elements, the policy elements, are are connected to each other. Let me stop there. Thank you. Let me stop there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe one, uh, just one clarification, uh, like regarding, like also the clarification of this question in Q and A on, uh, uh, like what is needed to count as a firm commitment, like this fifty billion dollars. Uh, uh, do you already like have some opinion because I understand that like this tool uh, is very unusual like this uh, financing tool is very unusual and it needs to be designed but really like what uh, uh, is there any uh, is there any decision already made so like will uh, written loan agreement be needed uh, or uh, just uh, like a statement from ministries of finance uh, of uh, G7 countries, uh, relevant G7 countries, uh, or it is still fluid and there is still no decision uh, at the IMF, uh, like what, what will be counted as really a firm commitment for this 20, uh, 12 months, as, uh, as you said? It, it is too early it's to answer that question, the starting point has to be to move beyond general assessments of the financing gap to have a much more precise set of numbers. And that's work which is underway right now, and I expect will be finalized in early September. But commitments will be required, but the nature of the commitment depends on who, which partner you're talking with. Uh, and, and of course, um, of course, the, the G seven involves a variety of a variety of countries. So it's from our standpoint, it's it's case by case. It's case by case. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh... Let's come to the Ukrainian side of today's discussion. Vladimir, it's very interesting that among those priority directions of covering the budget gap. The side related to the optimization of taxes was not mentioned by Mr. Gavin. So would you agree in the committee, you personally, with such a vision? Thank you, Gleep. Let me start with the certain context. Why we're not hearing this very often. It's not that I agree to this, but the context says that the gap that we are seeing, that it will not be covered even by 20% of expenditures, with the decrease of expenditures. 
let me start off that if we don't have enough some 500, 600 million until the end of the year. This was no secret and some tens months ago when the budget was proposed because we also discussed this at the Center of Economic Strategy that the expenditures for the defense are put in much less, taking into account that we have more defense uh, issues uh, related to the armed forces of Ukraine and SBU. So this was no secret. The question was how we address that. Now, coming back to the extent, to which extent we can decrease the expenditures. When we look at the budget, it was 3.3 trillion. It looks like a big amount. So you can't find some 500 uh, billion authorization. But exactly 3.3, out of the 3.3, 1.7 is the defense and security. If we also add up maintaining the debt is 2.2 and if we add only medical services and education it's 2.9 uh, so if we take this three trillion that we have in the state if we take out defense serving the state debt and the whole social part IDPs, deficit of the pension fund education and health, we only have 400 billion left. Can we still cut education and various social expenditures or pensions? This is a much more complicated question compared to increasing of taxes. But uh, if we forget about this, some 900 billion where more than half is spent, even if we decrease not by 20%, this will be like an additional some 40 billion until the end of the year. So the question is uh, to which extent this 40 billion are comparable with the need of 500, 600 billion, we all understand. So even if we start cutting off on expenditures very acutely and very abruptly this will give us additional 40 billion because the biggest chunks have already been cut in 22 in 23 especially in 24 roads various subventions to the local budgets so this additional Reserve. I said 40, but I believe it's even between 30 and 40. I believe under the results of the state budget, this 40 billion, okay, we can see them, they will be directed at security and defense. This is probably not reflected in that package, which is very logical, because it's not clear we will have savings where we will not have the savings, but that's the maximum potential for this year of 40 billion, which is absolutely not comparable with what is exactly needed. Now, coming back to the point at the expense of what we can get the money if we don't increase the taxes. Actually, we have three directions. I can't tell you whether they are popular or unpopular, whether I support them or not. Uh, one direction is the increase of taxes, and there are actually three more. Unlikely that they will be supported by the uh, society. First of all, it's energy. Let me remind you that in 2015, our international partners insisted that we go to the tariffs, the market tariffs, so that the poor people, the ones who can't pay for the communal services would have subsidies, and those who can pay, they should pay under the market fares. We walked away from this principle, we do have the program of subsidies, but we are still paying less than the market, that's a very unpopular fact. Our communal services are evaluated at much less than potential market rates, so those who pay, who can pay, uh, they still underpay. That means that the state energy companies 
is not sufficient. We are underperforming there. So factually, we can increase financing of subsidies, but significantly increase the financing of the budget at the expense of the increased dividends from the state companies. If we go to market tariffs, something that we did in 2015, having increased the program of subsidies for those who can't pay the market rates. The second direction is also quite less popular. It's increasing the, at the, local, at the expense of local budgets. We already did this, having sent the military PAT to defense and security. But now we're seeing that if we compare the state budget before the war and now, the growth of the state budget without security and defense, without serving the debt, it is significantly less in nominal prices, but in reality it fell significantly than the growth of local budgets. Yes, this is not popular. Somebody is uh, looking at this as uh, offense against decentralization, but in reality the local budgets are truly more strong. And unfortunately, I think we will have to look at uh, the fact that partially we can increase the financing of security and defense from the local budget because they suffered less. Yes, they did suffer, but they suffered less than others. And the third is, already mentioned about this, this is compliance, the tax compliance. What I'm saying is that the significant uh, uh, taxpayers uh, don't pay to the extent that they can pay. But once again, how can we, if somebody doesn't pay, and the question is how we can increase that. One of the examples is the pseudo-private uh, entrepreneurs, but the biggest part of the big business is using this private entrepreneur scheme in order to optimize the taxes of the big companies. So instead of paying the load that others are doing, 34% for the uh, wages, uh, they pay only 5-7%. This is one of the examples. If this could be sold, this could additionally give us 100 billion. It's going to be some 100 billion, plus minus 30%. So these are three additional directions in addition to other pieces of the budget that I see. And the last thing which I wanted to mention, turning to Minfin, this draft law about taxes, it's not very popular, it's understandable. It is connected now to the military martial law. The elections are also tied to the martial law, and our fiscal independence after the war will be, uh, unfortunately, depending on these changes, because there will be much less money from the partners, and without these changes, which are not popular, that will be negatively influencing the economy. There is no other way we won't be able after the stop of the war to continue living this. It would be more logical to tie it to some specific date. No parliamentary before elections. I know a lot of colleagues. They will definitely will not vote for the uh, keep the increased taxes before the elections. So we have to be safeguarding ourselves from this so that after the end of the war, but the fiscal stability would not deteriorate. Thank you, Glib. Thank you, Vladimir. I saw that Olga was listening very carefully to you and will pass this position to the minister. And in terms of the influence on economy, it's something that Vladimir has already mentioned in the context of the tax initiatives. As promised, I would like to ask you, Olena, to comment, and I think there was a lot of interesting information for you in today's discussion, to comment on your vision and the way how it will all affect the recovery of the Ukrainian economy in the closest 15 months. Thank you, Glib. Welcome to everybody. Very 
happy to be part of this very interesting discussion and really it seems to me to find the correct approach to this question of financing next year that is very critical for Ukraine. I want to remind you that uh, this financing is very important that supports the economy since the beginning of the war and it helps to provide for the macroeconomic stability growth of uh, reserves of the national bank and to normalize the economic situation even go back to the more or less good foreign exchange policy we also need to finance all the social expenditures from the budget and now it seems to me that the situation is with the outside financing it is slightly surprising the war is continuing in the intensity of the military actions increases and our partners say that they don't want that ukraine would do its uh, contribution to the fiscal consolidation then they will give more money i understand this uh, from the colleagues of mr gavin gray possibly you can correct me but um, for instance if we compare the size of the ukraine economy and our international partners then that financial assistance that providing for which we are very much thankful it is uh, 0 0.012 percent from the overall GDP of our partners and for Ukraine this is uh, these are the funds that are very important so if we say really about the fiscal consolidation we believe that in the first place it's important to concentrate on those priorities and to develop all the measures that will be less harmful for the economy because to find to engage a lot of money internally without harming the economic growth it will be very very difficult in these conditions and i'm very much thankful to volodymyr for raising these alternatives alternative measures uh, than just simply raising taxes i think this is something that we should uh, probably look at and uh, definitely include into this package of consolidation especially when it comes to lowering tax evasion this will not be quick but uh, it has to be done an important part of the fiscal consolidation package also the redistribution of expenditures from less productive into more productive it is more important for us uh, security and defense compared to some other non-critical expenditures that are financed from the local budgets and it's important to remind about uh, taxation of uh, extra profits so this practice probably makes sense to once again to revisit it is difficult right now to evaluate the impact of the proposed future fiscal measures on the economy because we don't have them in the final version and secondly this will be the first in the history of ukraine a large-scale change in taxation but once again we can say if we make the taxation only of those taxation of those only who pay taxes this will influence their income this will influence their capacity of their households to their purchasing capacity so this also will influence the internal consumption and the sources of economic growth who in the conditions of the war look uh, very much 
uh, with a lot of doubt. We have used a lot of sources. This year, there has been a huge support uh, from the seaports. The internal consumption has increased. If we suppress it with the more taxes, this internal consumption. So the question comes, what will be the source of the economic growth? Uh, continuing that the military activities will continue. Uh, Thank you, uh, Olena. Uh, Unfortunately, Gavin can't reply because he, as promised, he had to leave slightly earlier. But the question is absolutely legitimate, really. On the one hand, it's understandable what he is talking about, that we have to show our attitude, taking into account our human losses, really, where there is sense. So in the last five minutes, I wanted to come back to you with this possible, from your philosophical evaluation of this issue. So the, the government thinks about preserving the sustainability of uh, expenses for defense. And the second question in the chat, there is a question from Financial Times. And taking into account without the further wish of the Germans to put in the budget the support of Ukraine, referring to this 50 billion, do you see this uh, threat of the internal political problems? on behalf within our partners, irrespective of the things that Olena has mentioned this, or you're being too philosophical. We have been through this in terms of the support of us, of us uh, in, the, in, in this, and we will be finishing after your reply. Thank you, Gleb. I will start from the Second question, our philosophy is very much realistic and pragmatic. We always put in more pessimistic scenarios in order to receive as the result a better picture. And finally, taking into account your questions in terms of the news, on behalf of the German side, that we have not heard of the official position of that kind, so we are absolutely open and we are in the constructive communications both at the bilateral as well as at the multilateral level at the level of the EU. And it's important to talk about facts. The first fact is that Germany is one of the biggest donors of the Ukraine facility instrument and take into account that the EU with the participation of Germany has uh, made a decision on long-term support of Ukraine until 2027. This needs to be taken into account when we talk about uh, some specific news that potentially appear and which need to be verified in terms of the position of some separate governments. Germany is one of the biggest partners of Ukraine, both in the financial assistance as well as in the military assistance. And this is also a fact. At the moment, we are not seeing any problems in any bilateral communication, no cooperation with the real state of affairs. Therefore, it's not about even philosophy, it's uh, partially your right that we have gone through many stages in terms of various political turbulences, but this is not the basis for us to believe that this or 
other side either refuses from their obligations or decreases the support of Ukraine. I don't have the confirmation of this fact, and I would be very much thankful if you uh, are more clearly formulating the first part of your question, because I didn't get the framework of your question. Yes, because it's very complicated. Really, the question is, how, what is the vision of the Ministry of Finances in the negotiations with our international partners in terms of this balance between our financial contribution because of the increase of the tax pressure that will have a negative impact on the economy and the possibility of our partners. This is the question that Olena has raised in her performance in her speech. So this uh, proof in terms of some material initiatives for the first time in two and a half years, would that be not too much as viewed by the government from the influence on economic growth, or you don't have any other options and for the resilience in order to provide what needs to be paid to the uh, social sphere and the military don't have any other options. Yes, thank you for your question. This is not an easy exercise. Any decision that is proposed by the government, that is proposed by the Ministry of Finances, it is the decision that uh, for a long time being discussed with key partners, with the International Monetary Fund, and these are measures that are necessary to make sure that in the future we would give support by donors and not to allow, let us be frank, uh, feeling of tiredness on behalf of the partners, because for more than two years we have gone through without implementing such measures. If we look at the historical perspective in the, of other countries in the conditions of war, these measures were the ones that were used even in the beginning of the military campaigns. For more than two years, Ukraine was not introducing increasing of tax, and the proposal that will be looked at now at, level, at various levels, including in the first place in the Verkhovna Rada, this is the decision that has been discussed a lot with our biggest partners and with IMF. That doesn't mean that this is uh, a prerequisite without which there will be no outside financing at all. No, of course it will come. But again, as already said, there are certain limitations why the EU has transferred to the medium term financing, why we are seeing it until 2027, why do we have the IMF program that foresees uh, several years of, uh, ahead. In order for Ukraine to understand which additional measures it has to implement internally in order to match with the way how the needs are covered and how to use the external financing. My point is uh, we are not implementing these measures that will be destructive for the economy, like the monetary financing. We are not printing money, we're not turning to the national bank, like in the first year of the war, when it was critically important. Yeah, we don't have that a, a huge list of measures that we can implement if we go back to the first quarter of this year, when we had to quickly take necessary action in terms of the accumulation of some additional funds, while we had the temporary absence of the assistance, we said that these measures are not destructive for the economy. And we're seeing that this is the confirmation, direct confirmation is the macro indicators. So once again, the question of balancing, this is not a question exclusively for the position of the government. That's a very 
detailed, elaborate work with IMF, with partners who are ready to support Ukraine in the future. The question is that this overall resource is also limited. So some instruments do show us the mid-term perspective in order for us to be able to respond to its internal measures. But definitely there will be measures, and the current measures in terms of increasing taxes, they can't be politically popular. You will not find any historical example of the country in the state of war where people would uh, promote, would... Uh, advocate for such decisions, but in any case, all the countries in the state of war had to introduce such measures in order to mobilize extra resources for the needs of the military economy. So, as the classics said, everything for the front, everything for the victory. Many thanks, many thanks to all today's participants. The discussion, I think, was very deep very difficult as the situation where we are all in and i really hope that everybody got a better understanding many thanks for the great comments questions in q a and let us meet next month uh, with the discussion of the next topic do propose to us these topics maybe we're not seeing something so maybe something interesting is happening in the country outside of the news uh, Many thanks to all the participants, many thanks to colleagues at German Economic Team and the government of Germany for the support. Everybody wish you.